love what it says in the Bible. I was glad when they said in me, let's go in the house of the Lord. And I hope you are glad to be in the wonderful house of the Lord today for this wonderful and very special day in the life of so many people in our church. And I'm so glad if you're a visitor, if, uh, for you being here today, we are just so glad and privileged to have you with us. And we hope you know how important and special you are to us. And we're just super glad that you're here for us today, either you're visiting your mom or you're here for this parent-child dedication or you're just new in our community and looking for a church. We are just so glad that you're here today and hope you have a wonderful experience with us today. Um, I hope you saw all around the church there are several tables with these little uh, Bible uh, b bottles. We, uh, for the next few weeks, will have the opportunity to participate in the uh, baby bottle boomerang. Uh, the Ufala Pregnancy Research, uh, Resource Center every year uh, asks us to be a part of raising some money for special needs that they have uh, around uh, their, their facility. Uh, the Ufala Pregnancy Resource Center does a wonderful job uh, reaching many different people and different families' lives each and every day in our community. And so if you would like to participate, you can pick up one of these bottles and fill it up with change or dollars or even, even a check. Uh, but if you're able to write a check, if you would make that out to the Ufala Pregnancy Resource Center, we would appreciate that so much. And just know that every penny that goes will be used to, to help someone right here in Ufala. But again, thank you so much for being here today, and I hope that God touches you in a very special way. Let's stand and welcome one another this morning. Such a great day to be in the house of the Lord today. Let's start off our worship service by singing in Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my soul. This cornerstone, this solid ground. Burned in the fiercest drought and storm, my eyes above what depths of peace. When fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless day, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin. Right. 
Father God, how great it is to be in your house today to worship and sing praises to you. And, and Father, today we do celebrate our mothers and we lift them up to you and I pray special blessings upon them. And Father, we know that in you alone we trust and in your, our hope is found in you, Father. Now just continue to bless our time together. In your holy name I pray. Amen. One of the great pictures in my mind from the Bible is found in Matthew 19, 13, where it says that the people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and to pray for them. And today we have some parents that have come to give thanks for their children, and we had the wonderful opportunity to dedicate them to the Lord, uh, praying for them that they will grow up, coming to know and serving him. And we also want to dedicate and pray for these parents, asking God to give them wisdom and understanding and knowledge and the ability to raise their children in all the ways of the Lord. And as a church, let's dedicate ourselves to setting a good example for these parents and children as they grow up in the Lord. And so parents, uh, will you please stand? And parents, if you would uh, answer, we do, after me. As parents, do you recognize that your child is a gift from God and both thank God and glorify God for the gift of your child? And do you accept the joys and the responsibilities of parenting, promise to give proper love and care for your child throughout your life? And do you accept the joy uh, and as... With God's help, do you commit to teach your child the fullness of God's word and demonstrate through your own personal example and witness what it means to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and all your strength? In congregation, would you answer, we will, after me? Will you offer your ongoing love, support, and prayers and encouragement to these parents as they raise their children? Will you also pray for these children as much as you are able to help teach them to set a godly example for them so that they may grow and one day come to trust in the Lord as their Lord and Savior? Now at this time I'd like to introduce to you and present you a certificate of, ded of dedication. Gibson Travis Childry, parents Rebecca and Carl. Mary Rose Ingram, parents Renee and Timmy. <laughs> Cecil Rufus Ronan LaCroix, parents Christina and Wade. Braxton and Addie May Ogletree, parents Michaela and Tyler. Braxton's got some cars in his hand. Madison Ruth Rogers, parents Ashley and Slade. And Beckham Reese Todd, parents Kaylin and Reese. Isn't this a beautiful sight?
Now, I would like to ask if you are a proud brother or sister or grandparent, great-grandparent, uncle, aunts, cousin, or related to any of these sweet children in any kind of way, if you would just stay in and stay standing where you're at. Oh, I see a lot of smiles out there. <clears throat> all right. If you would uh, remain standing and so I could say a, pray for, a prayer for all of us this morning, if you would join me in prayer. Father, we do rejoice this morning and thank you for the lives of these very precious babies. God, we thank you for blessing these parents and these families that stand in this church with such precious gifts. And so, God, this morning, I pray that you would surround these children with good things so that they may grow up in your will and in your ways. God, I pray for these babies, parents, and families. God, that you would fill them with wisdom so that you would be able to train their child in the way that they should go and even when they're old, that they will not depart from it. God, thank you for life. Thank you for these babies. And it's your name we pray. Amen. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my first thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my 
says I'm messy. Goodness gracious, go and clean out this purse. Why is there so much junk in here? Here, give it to me. Oh. What in the world? Hey, those my special mustards. Uh, my turn. Oh. These help dad with the menu. Oh, I need some of that. <gasps> Ooh, I want candy. No, not candy. These are for Cammie, for when she has her coughing episodes. Hey girl, why do you need my purse? Keep moving. Okay, Slowpoke. You're the Slowpoke. Careful, that's Mama's prayer book. It hits the spot. <laughs> this is gonna take all day. It's just a purse, it's not like it's her closet. It's like a bottomless pit. I give up. Huh? <gasps> Fruit snacks. Everyone's chapsticks. Because Shannon is gross. Ruby's earplugs. Also gross. Dad's screwdriver. Does she even know how to use that? I think you forgot to use this one. <sighs> For Dad's ass, it's free flop. Flash card, duct tape, wallet. Thank you. She's broke. Is she even on keys? How could she when a purse is with everything that takes care of everyone else? Okay, Mom. I see you. Found them. Should we put all this stuff back? Nah, Mom will do it. <laughs> I don't know if any mom can relate to that or not. I heard a story this week about a little boy who forgot his Sunday school, uh, he was forgot his lines of the Sunday school presentation and his mother was sitting right there on the front row to help prompt him. And she gestured and tried to mouth the words silently but just nothing was helping. His son, her son's mind was just blank. Finally, she leaned forward and whispered the cue, I am the light of the world. The child beamed and with great feeling and her loud voice said, my mother is the light of the world. <laughs> what would we do without our mothers? And today is Mother's Day, a day that we set aside to honor and celebrate our mothers. And I do want to take this opportunity to just say thank you Thank you, moms, for being the light in our world. And because there's nothing greater in this world than a mom who walks with the Lord. And so if you're a mother here today, if you would just st stand up where you are, please, and remain standing. Can we thank our mothers this morning? Let me pray for you. Father, we are so thankful for times like this that we can come and celebrate our mothers and the influence they have had on our lives. On this morning, God, I'm thankful for my mother, for the way that she raised me and protected me, taught me and took care of me in so many different ways. God, I'm thankful for the many other ladies growing up, who had an influence on my life and on me and at different times helped me and molded me to be who I am today. Father, today I'm so thankful for my wife, and for bringing her into my life, for the way she loves me and helps me and stands by me and takes care of me today. Father, I'm so thankful for all the ladies in our church whether today they are a mom or an expecting mom or not able to be a mom. I thank you for the way that you use each of them to point others to you. And God, in your word, it talks about it as a mother comforts her child, so you will comfort us. So Father, we are thankful for the truth this morning that this verse of a mom comforting her children is a picture of what you want to do for us. Your desire is to, to comfort your children. And so I pray that you be with those here today that are maybe struggling. Maybe those of us who have lost our moms. 
Maybe those who have lost a child, those who long to have a child but can't, or those who are separated from or struggling in their relationship with their child. God, you know our hearts this morning. You know our desires. And I pray that you would make your presence known to us in a special way today. God, I pray that each lady here today, that they would feel and understand just how special and how beautiful and how important and how valuable they are to their family, to this church, but most importantly to you. So God, thank you for our moms and thank you for being a God who comforts your children. In Jesus Christ I pray, amen. Our offertory is this great hymn, God Give Us Christian Homes. We'll sing all four verses and our ushers will come at the end. So let's stand together and sing. Truly, Father God, we thank you for this time to be able to gather in your house, Father, to, to worship you, Father, and to, uh, to listen to your word, Father, as, uh, as Chris leads, uh, leads us with the message later in the service. Father, we thank you for this time to, to celebrate the mothers in our lives, Father, that uh, uh, just how much they take care of us, Father, and, uh, and show their patience with us, and uh, we can't uh, thank you enough for that. And Father, at this time, uh, we ask that you bless these tithing offering, offerings that, uh, that they use to uh, to impact the community around us, Father, and also to uh, spread your world uh, to the rest of the world. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
Sarah Catherine, what a beautiful job, and thank you, choir, and Nancy for the offertory. Thank you so very much. If you have your Bibles, please take them and turn with me to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. I read a story about a man who sent his wife uh, this sweet Mother's Day greeting. It says, M is for the mink coat you want, dear. O is for the opal ring you crave. T is for the tiny card you love, my sweet. H is for the hat that makes you rave. E is for the earrings you've admired and loved. And R is for the rug on which you tread. Put them all together and they spell bankrupt. So I settle for this card instead. There was an eight-year-old named Mary who wrote her mom a note on Mother's Day. It read, Dear Mother, here is the box of candy I bought for you on Mother's Day. It's very, very good candy. I know because I have already ate three. <laughs> and then there was another eight-year-old girl, Carol, who wrote a mother's note on Mother's Day. It read, Dear Mother, here are two aspirins. Have a happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Then there's a story about little six-year-old Johnny and four-year-old sister Susie. Susie presented her mom with a Mother's Day present. It was a small, gangly little house plant. While it wasn't the finest-looking specimen, they had brought it with their own money, so Mama was th 
thrilled. She hugged and kissed all over them and told them she loved them so much for just thinking of her. But then Johnny spoke up and said, there was some other flowers we wanted to buy you, Mom, but we didn't have enough money. Yes, yeah, said Sister Susie, they had a real nice bunch of flowers at the shop that we were going to buy. But I love this plant, said the happy Mom. I know, Mom, said Johnny, but these flowers would have been perfect for you. They were in a big wreath, and they had a ribbon on it that said, Rest in Peace. And we know you always are looking for a little peace so that you can rest. Well, the truth is, there is no card, no candy, no flowers, or no words to adequately honor the impact and the influence and touch of a mother's life who walks with the Lord. And us guys and children sometimes are not always the best at expressing it. But this morning, moms, grandmamas, sisters, aunts, ladies, we want to thank you and honor you for all you do. So let's start by looking at our passage of scripture together found in Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. It says, Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. First of all, we want to honor you for your unconditional love. John 16, 21 says, a woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come, but when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that is a child is born into this world. One of the big differences between the love of a mother and the love of others may have for us is that we don't have to earn our mother's love. Our mothers love us unconditionally, with no strings attached. It doesn't matter if you're the president of the United States or a member of the mob, your mother will love you. And even if you've messed up, and she is extremely disappointed in us, a mother's love will never give up on us. Maybe you remember hearing the story about a young girl who ran away to the big city to seek her freedom and fortune. But instead, she got caught up in a lifestyle where she ended up as a prostitute, selling herself to support her drug habit. But one night, as she entered into a bar lonely, she noticed a picture on one of the tables, propped up by a salt shaker. This picture was a picture of her mother, and on the bottom, written in ink, were the words, I love you, please come home. You see, her mother had passed out hundreds of these pictures across the city because of her unconditional love for her daughter. Now listen to these beautiful words found in 1 Corinthians 13, 7. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love is always, always. It's unconditional. And a mother's love is the kind of love that God has for each one of us. We can never earn God's love. It's a picture of grace. And Paul reminds us of, of, of this of us when he writes, but God showed his love for us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I like to think of it this way. God cannot love us any more than he does right now. But the flip side is just as awesome. God cannot love us any less than he does right now. It's unconditional love. And it's important that we learn to model and to practice this kind of love toward each other. That means I need to learn to love others when they may hurt me or disappoint me. What happens when someone disagrees with us or offends us in some way? Do we simply write them off and break lines of fellowship with them? What happens when someone sins and disappoints us? Do we wash our hands of them? No. If we practice unconditional love, we continue to love them. I love the story of a husband who uh, finally decided to ask his boss for a raise. It was Friday morning, and he told his wife what he was about to do. 
So all day long, the man felt nervous and very uneasy. But finally, late in the afternoon, he worked up enough courage to approach his boss. And to his delight, the boss agreed and he gave him a raise. So when the husband got home, he found a beautiful table set with the very best china. The candles were lit and the aroma of his favorite meal filled the room. Now, he had not told the great news to his wife, so he assumed that someone from the office had told her, but they had not. So he told her about the raise, and they hugged and kissed, and they sat down to a wonderful dinner. But next to the plate, the husband found a special little note, which read, Congratulations, dear. I knew you'd get that raise. All this is to tell you how much I love you. But there was something more. Because when the wife got up to go to the kitchen to get the dessert, the man noticed a second card that had fallen out of his wife's pocket. He picked it off the floor, and it read these words. Don't worry about not getting the raise. You deserve it anyway. All this is to tell you how much I love you. What a beautiful story, picture of unconditional love. She stood beside him no matter what, believing in him and loving him. You see, this is a picture of God's love, a love that is not conditional. It's not, I love you because of this, or I love you unless. No, God says, I love you regardless. And ladies, thank you for your unconditional love. Second, we want to honor you for teaching us what is most important in life. We learn a lot from our mothers, don't we? Some of it's good, some of it may be bad, and some of it's neutral. Uh, Mikey's Funnies has collected a list of some of the following things that mothers teach. And I want you to listen carefully and see if your mother ever taught you any of these things. My mother taught me about anticipation. Just wait till your father gets home. My mother taught me about medical science. If you don't stop crossing your eyes, they're going to freeze that way. My mother taught me about genetics. You're just like your father. My mother taught me wisdom of age. When you get to my age, you will understand. My mother taught me justice. One day you'll have kids, and I hope they'll turn out just like you, Then you'll see what it's like. My mother taught me religion. You better pray that will come out of my carpet. <laughs> my mother taught me time travel. If you don't straighten up, I'm going to knock you into the middle of next week. <laughs> my mother taught me about the weather. It looks like a tornado swept through your room. My mama taught me about the circle of life. I brought you into this world, and I can take you out. <laughs> my mother taught me about envy. There are millions of less fortunate children in this world who don't have wonderful parents like you do. I like all these, and this week they made me laugh. But the most important things I've learned about life and values and treating people, purpose for my life and devotion to study God's word, all these were taught to me by my parents, but especially my mother. We live in a society today that puts so much pressure on our precious children. Social media, friends, our culture in general sends so many different and false messages toward our kids. So many pressures, so many voices. But y'all, the good news today is that research continues to show that over and over again, the number one influence in a child's life is their parents. Can you believe that? Research suggests that children still listen to their parents more than any other presence in their lives. I read where a wife invited some people over for dinner, and at the table she turned to her six-year-old little girl and said, Would you please say the blessing? I wouldn't know what to say, the girl replied. Well, just say what you hear mommy say, the wife answered. The daughter bowed her head and prayed, Lord, why on earth did I invite all these people to dinner? <laughs> you see, our children 
are listening. They're listening. And I wonder what we are teaching them. You see, as parents, we have the responsibility to teach and to set the standards for what is important for our children. Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Maybe you remember reading the story of Hannah in the Bible. She longed for children, but she couldn't have. and She experienced that pain, but eventually God honored her cry, and she became the mother of a boy named Samuel. And the Bible teaches that Hannah's number one desire was to present or to dedicate, to introduce, and to teach Samuel the way of the Lord. We read in 1 Samuel 1.22 where she said to her husband, After this boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. This week I read the results of a study concluded by a Barna Research Group that illustrates the importance of the influence of a mother of a child's spiritual life. It says, practicing Christians in their teen years consistently identify mothers as the ones who provide spiritual guidance and instruction and instill the values and discipline of their faith in their household. Moms are the foremost partners in prayer, 63%, conversation about God, 70%, the Bible, 71%, and other faith questions, 72%. Mothers are also ones encouraging church attendance, 79%. Or teaching kids about the Bible, 66%. God's forgiveness, 66%. And religious traditions, 72%. Moms, thank you for taking and presenting your children up to the Lord. Thank you for teaching us about Jesus. For if parents do not do it by design, then by default, we are teaching or presenting them to something else. Because if you read on in the story of Samuel, you can see that because Hannah presented her son to the Lord, the result was that Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. 1 Samuel 2.26 tells us the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature and in favor with the Lord and with men. Now, parents, over the years in our student ministry, I've never seen any children or youth or even adults who just grew in the presence of the Lord by accident. No, there was someone there bringing and teaching. You see, how can we have children and students who grow in the presence of the Lord, and how can we have a dynamic children and youth ministries if only a few moms and dads are bringing and teaching their children God's word? Because if you keep reading the story, you get to 1 Samuel 3.20, and it says that all of Israel from Dan to Bathsheba recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. You see what happens here? Samuel became successful. He was famous. Everybody knew who he was. For it spread far and wide that Samuel was attested, someone who was going to follow the Lord. Four scholars were sitting there arguing about Bible translations. One said he preferred the King James Version because of its beauty and elegant Old English. Another said he liked the New American Standard Version for its literalism and how it moves the reader from passage to passage with confident feeling of accuracy from its original text. The third scholar was sold on the New Living Translation for its use of contemporary phrases and languages that captures the meaning of difficult ideas. And after being quiet for a moment, the fourth scholar admitted well, I personally have preferred my mother's translation. Well, when the other scholars started laughing, he said, yes, she translated the scriptures. My mom translated every page of the Bible into her life. And it's the most convincing translation I have ever read. 
What a higher praise could a mother receive than to be one who translated God's word into her life. Ladies, thank you for teaching us what's most important. And then third, we want to honor you for, for all you do. A middle school teacher taught on the properties of magnets for an entire class. The next day, he gave his students a quiz. And the first question on the quiz read like this. My name begins with an M, has six letters, and I pick up things. What am I? And half the kids in the class answered, Mother. I don't know how they figure these things out, but it's been said that if a typical mother uh, was paid for all she did at home, uh, she would actually be worth over $700,000 a year. Moms, you're a combination of taxi driver, judge, lawyer, chef, psychologist, teacher, preacher, doctor, and so many other things. So moms, do you ever get tired? Do you ever get tired? One day a man came home from late from work to find a total disaster at his house. The kids were outside. They were in their pajamas playing in the mud. There was empty food boxes and wrappers laying all around. And as he proceeded to the house, he found an even bigger mess. Dishes on the counter, dog food spilled on the floor, food all under the table, and little pieces of sand, all piles of sand by the back door. The family room was in ruin with toys and clothes all over the place. Then he headed up the stairs, stepping over all the mess to look for his wife. He was becoming worried that she may be ill or something else had happened to her. He finally found her in the bedroom, and she was in her pajamas, reading a book. And she looked up at him and said, how was your day? He looked at her confused and said, what happened here today? She again smiled and calmly answered, you know every day when you come home from work and ask me, what I did today? Yes, he replied. Well, she answered, well, today I didn't do it. <laughs> Moms, you ever feel like that? Tired? A lot going on? How am I going to figure all this out? And this week as I thought about this and I thought about my mom and dad, and especially my mom at the end of her life, and... Um, and I thought about many of you here today, that now you are an adult son or daughter, and you have aging parents. And life has kind of come full circle for you, and figuring out and navigating this role reversal era is pretty daunting. And you're trying to figure out what all this honoring your father and mother means for you today. And it could be a lot. It could be tough, and it could be tiring. But I love Jesus' promise when he says, Come to me, and all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I remember growing up, my mom quoting her favorite commercial when she got tired and stressed. Calgon, take me away. Now some of you will know what I'm talking about. Well, the truth is, we will never find true rest by hiding and locking ourselves in the bathroom. But we can only find true rest when we come to Jesus. God's word is full of encouragement for us. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Let us not lose heart in doing good. For in due time, we will reap if we do not grow weary. You see, when we all get to the end of our, of our ropes or we don't know what to do, we can always come to Jesus for some much-deserved rest. Ruth Bell Graham said, As a mother, my job is to take care of the possible and trust God with the impossible. So moms, I'm sorry as children and husbands we don't always do what we're supposed to do to help you out. But God's promise is this. He's not going to abandon you. 
He's always there with you to help you out so that you can experience true rest. Ladies, thank you for all you do. Father, thank you so much for your word. I thank you for your command that we are to honor our parents. God, I'm thankful for my mom, thankful for my dad, thankful for what they've done in my life so that I can be who I am today. God, thank you for these, these moms that are here today. God, we thank you for all that they do. Thank you for the way they teach us. And God, we thank you for the way they love us. Thank you for their lives pointing to who you are. And so, God, today we come honoring our, our moms, but we also come honoring and worshiping you. Thank you for our moms. In Jesus Christ we pray, amen. As we close our time together this morning, would we all stand and sing our hymn of commitment, hymn number 442, I Give All to You. Thank you again for being here today, and thank you for attention. We had a lot going on here this morning, but I think everything was special. It was special for me, and I hope it was special to you. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. Moms, again, thank you for all that you do. We love you, and hope you have a special day today. Hope you have a good week. If there's anything we can do for you, please let us know. Let's pray. Father, again, thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. God, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your word. And God, we're fixing to go out into a world that uh, a lot of people around us may not know you. And so, God, I pray that you would give us hearts, give us eyes, uh, give us a desire and a will to reach out to others and let them know about your amazing love. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen.